One, two, three. Do it. Oh, go girlfriend. I'm your mother. Come on, Thorny. You're losing to the rookie. It's embarrassing. Come on, rabbit. You can do it. Oh, rabbit, he's killing you. I got Thorny in front by a lot. What's the matter? Your mama didn't teach you how to chug? Come on, Thorn. Come on, Thorn. Oh. oh. God damn it. I am all, are all this man. Men. We're the four assholes. This is episode one of the four asshole podcast. My name is Paul. And uh, if I'm out looking for something to eat, looking for something to do, don't give me any suggestions. I'll make my own damn decision. I'm an asshole. I'm Miles, and uh, speaking of making your own damn decisions, I decided to slash the tires of every car outside the parking lot. Rude. I'm an asshole. Rude. <laughs> I'm Juan Cordero, and I took Spanish in college and got a B. Yikes. <laughs> and I'm Adam Marino. I once got my car tagged and towed from not moving it in six months. The car was in my own driveway, which makes me an asshole. That's an asshole Yikes. move. Asshole. <laughs> um, first topic on the day is just covering what kind of we'd done most recently, chilling on Friday um, at Buffalo Wings and Ribs, eating some food and drink some beer. Good stuff. Went, stuff. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. It was we good recommend. Um, Southwest. We were out Southwest. Um, hit Batman and Superman Dawn of Justice movie at the Carmike IMAX. Thoughts, fellas? Um, I'm huge, huge, huge into Batman. So I <clears throat> heard all the bad reviews and still could not wait to see it. Even though Ben Affleck was Batman, which I wasn't too sure about because I watched Daredevil, um, <laughs> what feels like 20 years ago. And I didn't enjoy that. And so I kind of thought, oh, geez, he's going to run Batman into the ground because Christian Bale did so well. I mean, I thought, I don't know what you guys think about Christian Bale, but I thought he did well. So I was like, oh. But actually, he did he did very well as Batman, I think. So Yeah, for sure. Um, um, ben Affleck was getting a lot of slack when or people that casted him as Batman got a bunch of slack of him being Batman just because of his previous roles. The Batfleck hashtag. The Batfleck hashtag, all this, all this jazz. But um, just piggybacking off what Adam said, I, I think Batman actually, I mean, Ben Affleck did a great job as um, Batman. And he must be good if you just refer to him as Batman. I mean, because he, is, he, sold he it. is Batman. I mean, yeah. <laughs> there is nothing else. I mean, the guy in real life... Um, Gives gives a lot of money to charity. He does a lot of good things for for the community, and he's old and he's badass. So not he, an asshole, but not an asshole. Not an well, asshole. You mean Pretty Ben much. Affleck in real life? Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He, 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 I've exactly. heard many times a lot of people <laughs> say. I think one's on his that, payroll. He's <laughs> <laughs> the nicest a, guy what, ever. Wait, ben what? Affleck. <laughs> Such a fan. Yeah, I was like, wait, what? And this one guy is like, every time I'm about to take off, he always comes up and asks me, hey, how you doing today? It's kind of awkward because you think Ben Affleck, asshole, not true. That's out in the group. Funny. So that's, I mean, that's one good thing that, that came from the movie, but uh, I think we collectively will have a lot of things kind of neg- negative to say about the movie. Um, and I will start off, and I know we all think the same thing, that the pace and the writing of this movie was horrible. Shitty. It, it was very <laughs> shitty. Yeah, it, it was. was. It was so slow. All, all over that, the place. That it put me to sleep, which, I mean, I'd go to sleep. In the <laughs> yeah, he anyway, honestly did. But he really did. I didn't yeah. really go to sleep. But it really was really slow. There's a lot of things that happened at the beginning of the movie that could have just been left out. Now, disclaimer, she it's not see, that yeah. bad where you should where you'll go no, to sleep. I mean, it, this is one you have to understand that. He falls asleep standing up, and he he just falls asleep. I mean, I think most of the people tuning in already know. And let's let's verify you're qualified to review because you'd seen it before. Like it's not like you're reviewing because you fell asleep. Yeah, right. right. I saw it already. He'd, he'd he'd already. seen it once, and the three of us <laughs> had not on. seen it. No, the no, rest no. of us, so, we don't know for sure if he stayed awake for the whole movie the first I don't time. Think I did. Yes. Yeah. We'll take your word for it. I don't think I did, but but yeah. Um, so things things that you you guys think that should have been left out of the movie. What do you guys think should have been left out of the movie? Oh, the whole Doomsday thing. Spoiler alert: There's Doomsday. So yeah. So if you guys are still listening, 
Spoiler alert, we are going to re- say some things about the movie, so if you are still listening, fuck you, we're going to keep on going. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, the whole Doomsday thing. It's either Batman versus Superman, or it's the death because of Superman. Because what is the movie called? Yeah. It's called Batman versus Superman. It's not Batman versus Superman versus, versus Doomsday. Doomsday. Dawn of Justice. Dawn of Justice. I didn't realize that Doomsday was anti-justice. It, we're it, right. What does he have to do with and, that? And how they made Doomsday. Doomsday was, if you guys don't, General Zod. Lex Luthor makes General Zod, brings him back to life, and turns him into freaking Doomsday, which I just don't care about that whatsoever. So... Um, like a big naked ninja turtle in the big, show. Big naked ninja turtle. And he just looked horrible. Wait, yeah. you guys, you're missing probably the most important factor in the entire movie. Yeah. The precursor to the Justice League. I mean, when Wonder Woman goes into Lex Luthor's files and clicks on the abstract A, then you see, bottom of the water, Anchorman is anchoring down an entire not, boat. It, it's, His long, <laughs> luscious, flowing hair. Anchorman. It's Ron Burgundy in the flesh. <laughs> and he's just gorgeous in Sub Diego uh, of all places. Yeah, Dude, it is Anchorman. He was. Uh, Anchorman, he went. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you mean Aquaman. I'm pretty sure it was Anchorman. I'm pretty no, sure it was. It was Aquaman. I'm pretty sure it was Anchorman. Uh, okay. Yeah. So why else would I wear this Anchorman shirt? This afternoon, if he wasn't in the movie, <laughs> he is wearing his. He is actually wearing. Oh, Channel Four News. Oh, assemble. 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 Yep, that make that does make sense. Wow. Well, either way, well, in geez. any case, when he knocked that capsule out of the water, that was awesome. I'm pretty sure you couldn't tell. It was a tight shot, but he was trapped in a whale's vagina. Ron <laughs> <laughs> Burgundy. Uh, Look at that hair. He was in Sub Diego. <laughs> Clearly. Clearly, was Anchorman. The hair so, was back, solid. so back to the title of this movie. The title of this movie. Back to is the lecture at hand. <laughs> Batman versus Superman. So how long did Batman and Superman fight for? In Five the, minutes. In the whole yeah, movie, yeah. Right, the whole Ten, movie. Maybe. Then, Ten, maybe. Oh no, no, this takes the cake. And that's then, if you count dirty looks. <laughs> then, then what happens is that him saying Martha. Which Adam and I had were talking about it, and I thought it was it, that Superman's mother's name was Mary, just because of how they depict Superman being like Jesus, a god, and his Earth mother's Earth name Mary. Is, yeah. I thought it was Mary, but doing further research, yes, doing further research, hit her um, Superman's mother's name on Earth is actually Martha. So it's Jonathan, right? Is the dad, and Martha's the mom. right, and Martha is the mother. Which that's so weird. Kevin Costner is. Kevin yeah, Costner is, yeah. His name is Jonathan in the movie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so about 10 minutes they fight. So they talk about 10 minutes. They yeah. fight about 10 minutes. How long do they take making up? <laughs> like two seconds. <laughs> right. Because what that, what why do you say that name, Martha? And then what was that that you saw that someone posted? Like, did we just become best friends? <laughs> yeah. There's a meme of them talking real like they're gonna fight and then all of a sudden did we just become best friends and then the picture is now not batman and superman it's champ but... kind in Burgundy. <laughs> yeah no this it's guy will ferrell and john c Riley from uh Step Brothers. did we just become best friends yes martha kent is a saint yeah <laughs> <laughs> so now because they share the same name their mothers are both named martha all of a sudden batman goes from literally wanting to break his neck to now sticking out his neck for him to save, to his, save his, his mother life. and has a cheesy line of, Martha will not die tonight. Maybe give him a tug job, too. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was just, that was a little over the top. I have to, I'll admit that as much as I hated about the way they made the movie, Ben Affleck's Batman, I think, is better than Christian yeah, Bale's Batman. His portrayal was pretty... Bruce was, Wayne was good. He was like badass, and he, I thought he did just an amazing job. Yeah. Um, what did you guys think about the voice changer? I liked it. I, yeah. th- I thought it was cool. Because with. Instead of doing how, what's his name did it? Bale's. Rah, 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 rah. Yeah, Bale's. Where is he? Dark Knight. 
this was he doesn't wear hockey pads like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, i'm not wearing hockey pads yeah <laughs> yeah the voice what they did for everyone kind of made fun of the old the older batman movies with christian bale because they the main thing they said was how come whenever he was batman they said that like his voice was distinctly lower and angrier and what christopher nolan came out and said as well it's supposed to be every time he puts on the suit he becomes more passionate and more like Ugh, more angry and so that's why he he does that but really the issue is um that they want to make his voice different but they really used um a machine to change his voice so with this movie they said all right we're going to change his voice but we're not going to have people make fun of it we're going to just write it into the script <laughs> like let's right. let's have jeremy irons who plays alfred in the beginning part of the movie, like, work on his changing of his voice. So that way people won't make fun of it. Yeah, this Batman had way more tech than we've seen the other Batmans have. It was so fucking much, awesome. Yeah, so much <laughs> equipment. The Batwing looked like the Batwing. Oh, yeah. The Batmobile didn't necessarily look like a tank. but It, it did didn't, not lose its wheel. But it didn't look like a Trans Am. Like, it looked like... Right, right. A, yeah, it was legit. A very cool, yeah. And then the Brander... The batarangs, yes. those automated like the fifty cal yeah, yeah, machine yeah. guns. Which let's talk about that for a second. Batman's uh, moral code. Yeah, I mean they kind of went a little bit off on his. Yeah, moral code. dude had guns yeah. all over the place. And yeah, didn't, yeah didn't, he didn't, he in his dream sequence with the gun and stuff. Yeah. Um. Now that we're talking about the dream sequence, do you remember those little those little like uh, minion flying yeah, the, things? Yeah, you yeah. know what that is kind of like. I uh, I do. It's because of Darkseid. Right? Right. Those are Darkseid's yeah. minions that are flying, so Darkseid's coming. If you don't know who Darkseid is, look him up. He'll be in the new X-Men Apocalypse movie. Will he be in the next Anchorman? <laughs> Probably. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Yes! I think, yes. I think we've covered Batman. Let's go on to the Superman side. What do you guys think of Clark Kent and now that he's been at the Daily Planet for a while? Lois Lane. Not that hot. Really? No, I, love, I thought she freaked. I love Amy Adams. I mean, when she goes up against Wonder Woman, I'll take Wonder Woman all day. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I love how we're all like, all right. well, Hashtag no-brainer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're talking about the man's eyes. <laughs> now, if you're around all men for like a month straight, I'll take Lois Lane all day. But well, she got to stack up against Wonder Woman. Hey, that scene. Game over. That scene with Clark and uh, and uh, Lois in the tub. Oh, Pretty yeah. hot. Yeah, that was it yeah. Was pretty hot, but you no, 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 no intercourse. You, no it was intercourse. like, oh, no. oh, oh. <laughs> very, <laughs> very PG thirteen. The classic PG-13, scene of the guy yes. showing that he loves her so much that he's gonna what? risk his clothes getting wet <laughs> and just jump in with her. I don't care about my clothes, woman. Do- Dockers but be damned. My question is, <laughs> what Jim Harbaugh it? was like, no. <laughs> what about his cell phone, though? I mean. He, he had no regards for his cell phone right. at all. No, no regard him. for his cell phone. But um, now that we're talking a little bit about Lois Lane, right at the beginning of the movie, when Lois Lane goes to off seas or whatever, um, Iraq or some shit. Iraq or who some knows? Shit, yeah, where, where Jimmy Olsen dies, Syria or something like that. <laughs> yeah, but Jimmy Olsen dies, and I just was w- watching a thing on YouTube and. Who directed the movie? What was his name? Again? Zack Snyder. Zack, Zack Snyder. Snyder said it would be fun to play around with his character just to kill him off. What? That's the reason they killed him. <laughs> to have fun with it. That's why Zack Snyder's not going to be in the, in the other movies. He's yeah. fired. He's done. Yeah. So, you can't do that. Done. No more. No, no mas, no more. What's funny is all this, and it, you, it makes, if you haven't seen the movie, it, you kind of think, well, I'm not going to go see it. No, go see it. I mean, these are, these are the... The, the bad things about it, but I mean, there's, there's a lot of things about the movie that are that I would go see it again and again, and I'm definitely going to buy it on Blu-ray. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, and there's a lot of things that were awesome about it. I mean, everything, just except for what we just talked about, um, the Batman fighting in the warehouse, um, Superman's death with Lois holding Superman at the, the final scene. Oh like, yeah, that's that, very that comic book. That's very comic book. That was you get to see other members of the Justice League. <laughs> back. All right, so back. Yeah. Miles really wants to talk about Justice League. All right, okay. Miles, get in there. Well, I just got it broken to me that Anchorman is not actually a part of the Justice League. I'm kind of broken. (laughs) The inside inside to me really hurt. But last night, I watched a cartoon, 
is called Flashpoint Paradox. It's on this? Netflix. And I thought it was going to be, obviously, a kid show. It's a cartoon. Well, no, once Batman, not. his father in the Paradox world, is actually Batman, Bruce Wayne's the one who gets killed. He's like, man, this is bullshit. I was like, wow, I would not show this to a seven-year-old at all. But that was very intriguing to actually see characters develop in both the real Justice League world compared to the Paradox world and actually see relatively unknown to a person that really doesn't know much about comics, a person like myself. I know Batman, I know Superman, don't know much background about Green Lantern, Flash, Aquaman, even Wonder Woman I'm kind of iffy on. But it's good to see their characters develop and know, yeah, these guys and female are pretty badass. Yeah. Yeah. Is it going to stand up to Avengers? Now that we've seen a tease of what DC is going for? I don't think so. T U F. It's going to be real it's, tough. Just like we said before, it, and DC is really trying to like catch up to Marvel and DC. And they're going a mile a minute. And they're trying to go a mile a minute, which it actually proved what we were talking about in this movie because they just try to pack so much stuff into one movie and just say, all right, let's touch on this, let's touch on this, let's get on this, let's get on this. Let's make the fanboys happy by doing this, 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 and this. But you kind of take the integrity of the the writing away and the storytelling, and it has a lot of holes in it. And it, I mean, Marvel and DC, have, I mean, Marvel and uh, Disney have done a great job of kind of doing little bits and pieces and how, how DC tried to do it, but Marvel and Disney did a, have been doing a phenomenal job and it's just more fun. To, right. The Marvel movies are more fun. Right. Yeah. They right. What, what did Kevin Smith say? <laughs> he, Ke- so Kevin Smith, who is known for being a comic book nerd in Hollywood, he's on Comic Book Men, and has directed some kind of classic cult movies like Clerks and Chasing Amy, reviewed the Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice and said, <laughs> even though it was PG-13, he'd seen Deadpool twice, <laughs> and he would take a little kid to see Deadpool <laughs> Before he took his a little kid to <laughs> yeah. go see Batman Dawn of Ju- Superman Dawn of Justice. Yeah, Deadpool even though Deadpool's fun. the hardest R I've probably seen in twenty years. Right, <laughs> but it was actually man actually takes a dildo up his ass from his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> he does. But yeah, it was dark. It was so dark, and everything Batman is dark. I mean, the show Gotham is very dark. It's always raining or cloudy. I get that, and Avengers and all those. It's so bright and colorful, and that's just the difference between the two comic worlds, I feel like. And so if well, yeah. you don't know that going right. in, you're like, how come all these movies are always this way? That's that's kind of how they are, but that plays into then with sales and what people think of the movie, and it's just overall sad. It was Everyone was mad. Everyone was – there was destruction and death and – Way more than in Avengers. And as a newbie, that's actually why I like DC more than Marvel. I like the dark feeling compared to the Avengers and even X-Men. X-Men tries to lean a little bit more dark but still is brighter than most of the DC universe. I really enjoy the dark feeling because that's the whole point of the doom and gloom. The anti-villain, or not the anti-villain, the anti-heroes and the super villains bring it down but the superheroes provide that little glimmer of hope yeah. Yeah, now sure. it's kind of gets me mad that superman wears an s on his chest it's supposed to represent hope for his people of krypton i mean hope starts with h stupid <laughs> <laughs> get your shit together but that's not what the s stands for it's not an S. It's a symbol, right? It's just yeah, it's not it's even just a letter. A it's not a letter. It's not a letter. To me, it's, letter it's the letter S for <laughs> Superman. Uh, the letter of the law, if you will. The letter of the law. <laughs> so, so overall, it was a good movie. Go watch it. Go take all your friends and go see it. And, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's been really acknowledging for me, hanging around these assholes, actually learning about superheroes. But while we talk about superheroes in a super world why don't we discuss our little itty bitty hometown hero who really is an itty bitty in the front nor the back (laughs) of course i'm talking about the interesting brie olsen also originally known as rachel overland from houston texas then moved up and grew up in woodburn indiana 
the words are something that I didn't expect to affect me in my everyday life. So when I go out, I feel as if I'm wearing slut across my forehead. The names that people have called me, it's as if if you could take out those names and print them and put a ribbon around my whole body of all the names and things that people say to me on the internet, that's how I feel when I walk outside the door. I came from the adult industry, but then I transitioned into the mainstream industry, but I encountered a lot of issues with uh, my transition and people not accepting me into the mainstream world. Oh yeah, that was pretty recent, I believe. Last week, she releases a video of an interview that she had done, again recently, essentially throwing her own pity party and how hard it has been to transition from the adult uh, frowned upon world of porn to a more... The taboo world. Yeah. yeah. A She's more, a mainstream. More normal, just normal. Yeah, just be normal. More normal life, and, and she's having, having a tr- tough time transitioning. Yeah, she says, in quote, she has trouble finding work and making friends. Um, that's a decision you made, and I mean, if you don't... If, if you don't think that you're going to have some trials and tribulations from going from that type of industry and then trying to move into like this so and so quote like real society, then you got something coming at you. Because she yeah, had to, have, I, yeah, go ahead. I said she had to have known that that was a possibility going into it, like Adam said. Absolutely. Before. And what I really got from this when I was first watching this, I was completely on her side. I was like, yeah, she's going to take this in a direction that shows how she was exploited in this industry, how she was treated terribly. If she could go back and redo it all again, she wouldn't. And she portrays that in a very interesting manner. And you see how she tries to hook you with her personal feelings and emotions right here. They don't treat me like an ex-sex worker. They treat me like I would somehow be damaging to children. Simple question, like, how would you like to be treated? Oh my gosh, I've never heard about that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Poor girl. <laughs> wow. Okay. But that's so, not what you are. But th- exactly, that's not what you are. So you left Fort Wayne, Indiana, or Woodburn, or whatever, and you moved to LA. You were in the porn industry. Then you left the porn industry to be like, um, what's Normal. the name's like, well, what's his name? Charlie Sheen's little bunny. And to move around and do their drugs or whatever. One of his it is. goddesses. Yeah, the One goddesses. of his goddesses is what they how they said it. And she's talking about I want to be treated like a married individual. Yeah, you entered into a relationship with a well known man whore who had multiple goddesses, aka girlfriends. And that's known as as a relationship. <laughs> Touche. And that will also label you as a slut or a whore that you said that you didn't like being called. So I don't know. It's you, interesting. You can't get paid. You cannot be paid to have sex on film and then turn around later and say, oh, bah, 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 bah. you can't. It doesn't. It just doesn't work that way. You made the decision. Now, the only thing that I was like, okay, on her side and maybe give her a salute was that when she said she she tells 18-year-old girls not to do it. Now, I can be on board with that because... That's just a classic case of where you say, look, I'm older now, and I don't want you to go through what I did. Other people would never be, and that they shouldn't do. And I send a very strong message to young girls, don't do porn, because as much I understand that you want to embrace your sexuality, you want to say, screw the man, screw the whatever, like, I can do what I want with my body, but you're just going to have a life of crap in front of you and dealing with people and companies and you know there's companies are allowed to turn you down for work really really (laughs) you you know they have morality clauses you can never work with children after you do porn you can never work in a medical field after porn and these are things that Teenage girls Bingo. Something you didn't think about. That's it. So that's my point is basically if she was going to come out and be a a guide for young girls coming up, then you know what? She probably can get paid to go to high schools 
and there are plenty right. outside the box thinkers right. who are right. principals who would pay her a little bit, not you know, Dude, she, not could a series, she could write a series, she of could write books. a series of books, she right. could all kinds of stuff. If she really is down to help, which we'll find out. This video is not that old, right. so we'll find out in the next few months now, what she really plans on again, doing. Again, porn stars make me do this. But when I was first watching this, I was like, good. Here's another world-famous porn star that was going to take self-responsibility for her actions and just be, yeah, sure, disappointed in herself, but even say, you know, I made those decisions. I will not wallow in my own fury. I will go ahead and be that guy for females for the future and tell them, let's not get in this industry because... That is not respect to women and what we should be, but she takes that in a different direction. You're making money, and that's the truth. It is, and there's nothing wrong with porn, but how people treat you for the rest of your life, it's not worth it. I definitely think that it's time for people to respect sex workers and respect women in all and total. Absolutely. So then really her message isn't to other women, don't go into this because it's bad. It's... Let's make this a normal thing so that you can treat me the same way you treat the registered <laughs> nurse with two and a half kids from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Not no. buying it. Not buying it. And it's it, what? It's its oldest prostitution. It's its oldest occupation. Profession, yeah. Occupation Profession in the world. In the world, but it's occupation. Still, <laughs> occupation. And it's still listed as something that you really want to not use as a everyday for working yeah. environment. For thousands of years. For thousands we, of we, years. Yeah, and then she goes on and complains about how people will see her as an endangerment to children. Well, right. yeah, sorry that I have a stigma that I don't want porn stars around my children or children that I know. But how can you blame me for that? Yeah, sure, that's true. But it's one of those, they say, oh, don't judge people. I think that's bull crap. We were given the ability to judge. What we shouldn't do is make assumptions about individuals. Now, here with this individual, she made the choice to be in the porn industry. And so now, yeah, as human beings, we naturally judge things. Right. What would? How about this? Do you think that she has a little bit more psychological problems going on in her, and that's why she's talking and acting like this, because of what happened with Charlie Sheen? I mean, I mean... Well, think she's, about it. she's full of something. I mean, it just think about it. Someone you're for quite a while. Being with someone like that and then just not knowing, yeah, are you sure you didn't know? But that can really mess with somebody up in the head a little bit. I think it between be. be, being in the porn industry and then messing around with Charlie Sheen and being but, around that lifestyle. But see, that's the exact point of a lot of former porn workers, both male and female. I've seen both male and females talk about how it did mess with them, and that's why it's wrong. They should have never got into it in the first place. Right. Not because people treated them bad, but because it messed with their head. Their own decision exactly. led to them being messed up. And, you know, we got to admit, we're pretty messed up, too. We're all assholes. We're so. all assholes. <laughs> we're all right. here. But the thing that's funny, though, is that she says that there's nothing, nothing hindering, uh, nothing wrong with the porn industry and women embracing their sexu- sexuality but at the same time sends a strong strong message to young girls to not to not do porn. Oh, that's exactly it's just, right. It's just it's, that's it's exactly right. It's confusing. Yes. It's contradicting. What is, what's it's, her? You got to look. It's like, who do you blame? You blame herself. You blame the people around. Or now people are saying, oh, you blame her upbringing, whether it's her upbringing here in Woodburn. Who knows? Was it how she was raised in Houston right. as a young child? Who knows? A, but. Part, a part of me feels for her, a part of me doesn't. But going from busting nuts to busting brackets. Let's talk more about Houston. Brie Olson's homeland. Oh, yeah. What else is oh. home in Houston this year? The, the, the final The final four. cuatro. The final. What, what is cuatro? <laughs> oh, it's a shit. Uh, you know, it's a, shit a razor. Cuatro. It's yeah, a razor. Oh. It's a oh. Oh. razor. No, you speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> So final I'll go, four. I'll talk a little bit about the final four since I probably had the least knowledge of this. And go that just, makes go sense for gold. for this podcast. Yeah, yeah, go for the gold. least qualified person. Least qualified to because speak the first slide. <laughs> okay, speak. Shit that's, why, that's why I let off about Batman versus Superman. <laughs> that's a real asshole move. <laughs> real asshole move. So um, 
I'm just gonna go with what Dick Vitale said. You know what his picks are. So he has Oklahoma over Van- Villanova and North Carolina. It's vanilla. Over it's pronounced vanilla. Vanilla. Vanilla Nova. Villanueva. Villanueva. Oh, oh, Charlie. Yeah. And then North Carolina yeah, over Syracuse. Syracuse. Juan, Juan's pick has no eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> like Charlie Villanueva. So, so, so it'll be Oklahoma and North Carolina in the duel on Monday. Wow. Which now here's the big question. That's a chalk pick. If if Charlie Villanueva, who has no eyebrows, had a baby with the unibrow, um what is the level of eyebrow that that person would have? Pretty solid or would it be just messed up? I Anthony think Davis. I think it <laughs> would come out as a unibrow. But it'd be very spotty oh, all the okay. way across. So very light. Would it would have, you would see it, but not qualified to be in the next barbershop movie. <laughs> all right, that's pretty solid. <laughs> now, as an individual that does nothing but follow sports, my picks are actually the exact same as Juan. So that goes to show <laughs> so, whether on. you know <laughs> everything or nothing about sports. Well, those are not my picks. Those are Dick Vitale's picks. Well, therefore, they're your picks, I well, guess. Well, I'm picking them now. So. But in any case, whether you know anything or nothing about the sport of basketball, you could just throw it against the wall, throw spaghetti against the wall, and something will stick. Whether you know something or not, who knows if your picks will be right. Because... It always seems like those that know the most have the worst brackets. For sure. Yeah. Well, I just say that because I think I know a lot about sports and my brackets always suck. <laughs> oh, <laughs> brackets busted from day one. With From day one. With the worst upset in college basketball history for the tournament. Statistically. Was Michigan State. And it screwed everybody. And that's just yeah, from there. Me. Yeah, and even as a Michigan fan, I had them in my Final Four just because every year, Tom Izzo. No, oh, I had him winning the national championship. Yeah. I'm an Indiana grad, and, you know, I got to tip my cap to the team I think is not only playing the ba- best basketball at the current time, but also top to bottom has the best team. I thought it was Michigan State, and I was wrong again. The only reason I didn't pick Michigan State was I randomly had to pick a few upsets, so I didn't have them. But other than that... So you're saying you picked Middle Tennessee? So <laughs> No, not that. <laughs> upset. Come on, grow some balls. That was way upset. To I me. had Little Rock, Arkansas. Hey, that's good. Wow. Now, Adam, also to your credit, you did pick the upset of Stephen F. Austin over Press Virginia, West yep. Virginia. But again, that was random. That wasn't skill, I'll admit. I have Carolina. I do have Carolina winning the whole thing. Thank I had you. them playing Duke. And... That's not my happen. only hope, That's not my happen. only hope remaining was Oklahoma getting to the national championship final. I thought Buddy Hill and his really his surroundings, his uh, teammates would make it this far because Buddy Hill is really that good. I don't know how great he'll be in the NBA. A lot of scouts don't think he his potential is on the level of a say Ben Simmons or Brandon Ingram, but he could go down as one of the best college players ever if they win the national championship. That's a big, fat IF. And it's also fitting that the best player in college basketball, his name is Buddy. <laughs> I'm not your really? Buddy, pal. I'm not your pal, friend. I'm not your friend, guy. <laughs> Hi, Buddy. I hope you find your dad. <laughs> so, my buddy, my buddy. What? Breaking buddy down inside, inside the matchups. Let's go... Three games, okay, with making the two as they are, Villanova, Oklahoma, North Carolina, Syracuse, and then based on predictions, what we each think will happen in those games. Adam, Oklahoma, Villanova, what happens in about an hour? Um, I, got, I have Oklahoma, but I would not be surprised if Villanova, I mean, they've got this far by just – Getting it done, just flat out getting it done. They haven't played a guy in Buddy Heald's, you know, galaxy. Uh, yeah, not even close. But when the thing about Buddy Heald is his team, when he's not doing what he does, they still have found a lot of ways to win. So even if they shut him down, that team is still good enough to win. So I still have Oklahoma winning tonight. That's what I think. 
He has no idea. <laughs> he has no idea. <laughs> Not a damn clue. Uh, that's a good one. He's there for the, uh, what he said. <laughs> what he's here for is uh, the boneless wings. <laughs> and, and not to translate. Uh, Asian Zing. Yeah. Asian I came Zing. here <laughs> to do a podcast and chew bubble gum. And I'm all out of bubble gum. <laughs> what was that off of? The Roddy Paper movie. What was the movie called? The remember? Roddy Piper movie. <laughs> the Roddy Piper movie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Oh, dude. I, yeah, I watched it. But yes, that was... It was a long time. It was in, like an 8, 1980s. Yeah, an right? 80s Roddy Piper movie. Okay, Paul. Predictions. Um, I had North Carolina over Kansas, so that's not going to work out. I do see Oklahoma. You're doing better than me, bud. <laughs> I do see Oklahoma winning just because the way they played the whole tournament. Good Lord. They haven't had, I don't think, they haven't really been tested at all. Yeah, they did see a little bit against San Diego State in the first round, and also VCU did push them. They pushed them hard, but again, Oklahoma pulled away it's, at the end. Yeah, I mean, it the was, final score it, was it, it was a one-possession game with under five minutes left, but Oklahoma can finish, and I think that's why they'll take out Villanova tonight. But I think it'll be Oklahoma and uh, North Carolina – We'll end up winning still. I'll go with uh, North Carolina. Yeah, and I think that's the biggest question. With Syracuse's zone, will North Carolina be able to shoot tonight against the Cuse? Yeah, it'll be either. I think both of these games will not be um, blowouts either is the thing, too. Um, It'll be competitive. Yeah, both teams are set up for to, to just not be blown out, I don't think, for Oklahoma or Villanova. And then going the other way, if um, Syracuse can't shoot it from the outside, um, maybe it could get out of hand. But I think in Syracuse and North Carolina situation, it's not going to be a blowout either. So we're excited for both games tonight. Yeah, Probably more excited for basketball than, say, um, most players for the Lakers feel right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well... Yeah, that's that's one organization that has gone from the pinnacle to the absolute shit tank. <laughs> We're struck in franchise NBA. history. <laughs> and w- one thing you really got to think about is once Kobe leaves, what's going to happen? Their next Where's leader the is right. supposed. Their next leader is supposed to be D'Angelo Russell. <laughs> He's and supposed I mean, to be my. God. It's hard to keep a straight face boys, and say his name anymore. Boys, what are we dealing with? And here? if so, I guess we have to go through and it's hard in dealing with some of these topics that are so blown up right away that it feels like if um right away it, it gets talked about so much, but I there has to be some people listening that really don't know what happened. And for those of you that don't abla Los Angeles Lakers, <laughs> what happened was Swaggy P, a.k.a. Nick Young, a guard for the L.A. Lakers, who's engaged to Iggy Azalea, admitted to his boy, D'Angelo Russell, that he was sleeping with many other women. So without Nick Young's knowledge, D'Angelo Russell decided to film him without him knowing or his consent. How old was you? Why are you? What about what about Amber Rose? You never tried? She's baiting him. What? I'm glad you told I'm my glad video you told all that. My video and he's all like, that. Huh? Man, <laughs> man, I was recording you the whole time. Sorry about you, cuz. Why you always no. lying? There's no, there's no sorry after that. And I didn't hear. But what that, about my bad? I didn't hear that at first. All I heard was that it happened and that there was apologies. Then later, I heard what we just played for you, and I'm like, no, no, no. There's no. That's why when people were saying. Yeah, he apologized, but it's not really going over too well. Uh, yeah, yeah, think. Yeah, it's think. It's not going over too well. Well, and if you look at this, 
uh, from the literal sense of watching that video and breaking it down, you can see, okay, if D'Angelo Russell's able to say right to Nick Young's face, uh, I'm glad you put this on my entire video, clearly Nick Young was intoxicated, either alcohol, drugs, whatever yeah, it may be. He's on, he was under the influence. And D'Angelo Russell, Russell probably was as well. But my question is, does D'Angelo Russell have a thing for Iggs? <laughs> Probably. Why else would he be trying to, yeah. L- bait him into admitting to cheating on her. Right. I don't think she's that cute, but I mean, that's not really <laughs> what's going No, not at all. But that takes balls to, and pre-planning. There's no way you can just be like, oh, I didn't mean it. He sat there with his phone on recording, well, specifically naming out girls. What about Amber Rose? Would you fuck her? <laughs> right, right. Uh, no, she knows my girl. Oh, she knows your girl. What about this other? Yeah. <laughs> right. What but, can just, I? but like my, like Miles was saying though, there or Adam or someone was saying that um, they're obviously intoxicated or on some drugs or something. I mean, just kind of playing devil's advocate. I mean, he could he could be like, did I really mean to do that? I was under the influence, but he can't say that because he was twenty I mean, years old. Well, he's twenty years well, old, he plays for the <laughs> but he plays for the Lakers. He plays for the NBA. So if it would have come out that he was actually taking some type of illegal substance or whatever, and they both were doing it while they had a game the next day or something, there could be other issues there. Am I correct? Or I think you're absolutely spot on. Yeah. So, yeah. But I was watching something today earlier on ESPN, and it, um, they someone said, um, a reporter said to Swaggy P, which I don't understand how that's his name, but they said um, <laughs> the older up. players said that if this would happen back in the day, that there would be some locker room enforcement. And then Swaggy P said, um, what do you mean? <laughs> so then the reporter had to explain to him what he meant by locker room enforcement. And he's like, they would probably beat someone up like that. And he goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. I would, I would, uh, I would, I would get, I would be back on that. I would get physical back. Like, I mean, come on, man. How are you going to? Say you didn't mean to do it, and then get physical about something you didn't mean to do. So then that really says right there that you did mean to do it. So now, now in your defense, Juan, had that reporter worked for the Daily Planet, you would have had his name like that. <laughs> so, it, it's all right. Now that that's good to really know how their feelings are going towards each other going forward. I mean, it's just it's too bad that these kids. Really, they are they are in their young twenties, but they gotta they gotta know the role. Too bad you're young. Too bad, right? You you gotta know that. Yes, you are a Los Angeles Laker. Your team sucks, but right. historically, look who you're living up to, and mm. you're living up to the brand of the NBA, the National Basketball Association. Sorry, you're twenty. You got to make decisions every single second and be thoughtful of those decisions every single second because in this world you have social media and you have video like that where you can pull out your iPhone or your Samsung, your S4, S5, whatever it may may be, and you may be captured at every moment. So if you're the one doing the capturing, you got to think, oh, what are the repercussions of this going to be if I'm going to post this online? Right, exactly. Now, his career is basically destroyed. Yeah, he may play in the league 12 years. Who knows? I doubt that now. But will he ever be trusted again? Well, I don't the, think so. The, I don't think he will be ever trusted again by another teammate, no matter where he plays, whether it's L.A. or it's in Milwaukee yeah. or Atlanta. He's, he's, I don't think he's ever trusted again. He's not getting into the Bro Code Hall of Fame. He made, like, <laughs> the <laughs> ultimate. He's the Pete Rose of Bro Codes. Oh, so, right. This well, guy players has, Club card Revo. <laughs> yeah. He's not. Uh, but the, the the upside, upside of it for um, – Swaggy P or whatever his freaking name is, is that they really don't have a rest of the season left. So there's they, seven games left. There's seven games left. They're not going anywhere. And they still have season. to say, see, they still have to say farewell to Kobe. And they're more worried about that, I think. Right. And that's good. So it may be over. It may be kind of maybe let go a little bit. I mean, with, with how yeah. fast social media is. And I don't, I think, I think people like us. We'll forget about this in like two weeks. Exactly. But, that was going to be. But, I said and, and then you filled it in for me. But the, the American players, people but are, the players are going to continually remember this. Absolutely. And it's going to be something that 
um, D'Angelo is just going to have to figure out how to rebuild that relationship with the rest of his team so when it comes next season that he's like, hey, guys, I take full responsibility of what's going on. He has to do something like that. For he sure. has to show leadership and say, hey, my bad. Whatever I can do to make this better for you guys, let's do it. But let's play some basketball. This is what's, this is why we are brought together. Let's play some b-ball and let's make this shit happen and then just leave it at that. I mean, he, that, he has to do that. And from four assholes to D'Angelo Russell, you're just a dick. I'm real assholes. My name is Paul, and again, I make my own goddamn decisions. And I'm Miles. And what I have is Miles. I slash tires. I'm Adam Reno, and I was going to go get some pizza, but uh, now I can't. And yo soy Juan Cordero. No me gusta hablar en español, me gusta hablar en inglés. Pinche carro de madre. Yo soy un asshole.